a mysterious indie film that has a puritanical post-apocalyptic style? Sounds good to me. Let's talk about Glass House. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking about Glass House, which came to digital and on demand on July 12, 2022. It's a mysterious indie film from director Kelsey Egan that has a lot going on and also has a lot to offer. My hot take is I actually think you should watch it. It has just some beautiful music, a very interesting setting, a good kind of overall feel to it. It feels like an indie film that has a much bigger budget than I imagined it did. Uh, and it has a very interesting, mysterious story. It's one that's confusing and takes a while to get going, but it has a satisfying ending with some surprises and twists. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like. I'm gonna keep this one spoiler free, so you don't have to worry about spoilers, but you might first be wondering why I'm dressed up like this. Well, in Glass House, you have it's a post-apocalyptic world where it seems like pretty much everywhere on Earth has been taken over by this, this disease, this gas called the shred, which messes with people's memories. It makes them forget, you know, everything about being human and just kind of turn into like wandering, essentially zombies, but they're not dead, but they are essentially brain dead. And so in this world, you have this kind of, I don't know, oasis uh, in the shred that has trees and a glass house and a strange family that has a lot of rules to survive. Uh, it's it's a, a matriarchal mother and then a few of her children that uh, you know comprise this family and work the fields, protect their environment to try to make sure that nothing can uh, can enter their little sanctuary. It has trees, it has plants, it has a glass house, which is probably one of the reasons why this film is called Glass House. And Everything seems to be working until a stranger stumbles into their, their refuge and starts to question why things are the way they are and starts to kind of upend some things about their system. So things I liked about this movie. The first, it's a strange one to say first, but the music. The music is fantastic. I love the music. It has this kind of beautiful, haunting, classical soundtrack to it that uh, was just a joy to listen to. It actually reminded me of another one of my favorite soundtracks in the film, The Fountain. It had this just kind of like, wonderful underlying classical sound that also really did a good job of setting the tone like this film feels a little dreamlike because you have this oasis in the middle of essentially you know a ruined earth and that comes through in the music as well the music helps to kind of set the stage give it this kind of like dreamlike otherworldly feel uh the second thing i really loved is the setting like it was a really smart decision to set it in this place you have this beautiful lush area uh that feels like from a very different time you've got this beautiful glass house in the middle uh it's worn down it feels like it, it is worn but it also feels like a sanctuary given what is out around them and also i think the setting was a smart decision because it also helps to explain why there are so few people look it's an indie film you're not gonna have a big cast and the way that they built this world and the way that they set it up does make it so that you don't need to have a ton of interactions in order to really buy into the story uh the third thing i really liked is the strange story the story is is weird and mysterious you don't really get a ton uh, at the start. It kind of trickle feeds things to you as the story goes along. And one of the things that you'll like if you like to rewatch movies is there's plenty of little hints here and plenty of things that are dropped that I didn't catch until my second viewing. Uh, maybe if you're being a little more attentive, you might catch them. But for me, it was fun to rewatch it and kind of pick up on new hints and pick up on things that were you know dropped before. Now that I knew kind of more about this world and more about the overall story. And the last thing I really liked is the ending. The ending is a little bit of a surprise. It has a twist. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a nice way to kind of tie the story together. And I did like the surprise and the twist because it did kind of make this film that has a, a very slow start, a very interesting but slow start, kind of have a, a, a more thrilling end. So things I didn't love as much, and there's there are both minor. They're not that big. Uh, the first, it's kind of a double-edged sword. I really love the mysterious nature of the story, but it did feel like it took a while to get going. Now, look, this this film has kind of a lot going on in the world and a lot going on in this family setup. So it does lay the groundwork for a while, which means the film takes a little bit before you get to kind of more of the intrigue and the exciting parts of the movie. Now, like I said, it's a minor knock. It's not a big deal, but it did feel like it was a very slow start. The second thing I didn't really love uh, is it's just a confusing film overall. Now, by the end of the movie, I kind of had everything under control. But especially at the start, I was left kind of scratching my head because this film doesn't tell you much about what's going on because it just kind of trickle feeds you information and gives you context clues. I didn't really know much about the world. That, that didn't stop me from watching it. That didn't stop me from wanting to watch it again. Uh, I just put it as kind of a, a negative because it does feel like maybe you have to watch this movie twice to really get a full sense of what's going on. But you know what? I was looking forward to watching it twice, and I got to watch it twice to prepare for an interview. So uh, it, it's not a huge knock, but it's something that, you know, if you only watch a movie once or you want to kind of like just see it once and get everything, 
it, it's a tough one to follow. So that's Glass House. It comes to Digital On Demand on July 12, 2022. Definitely think you should check it out. And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.